amplified music. I mean, who has a wedding and doesn't want to dance? You know, just not realistic. The big difference between people who attend those events and those of us who live on maybe Clonmel Lane or Prospect Street nearby is that for those people, they can come and enjoy these events on a standalone basis, as a one night stand, if you will, and then they go home to their house. For the rest of us, we live there. This is our home. We can't go anywhere else, or we choose not to go anywhere else. And to face this kind of um, activity on an ongoing basis is far less appealing. It may be, in a, and in reading the, uh, the, the inputs from the various county departments, it may be that approving a commercial operation of, of a relatively significant scope in the middle of what is essentially a quiet residential neighborhood, in addition to providing financial relief for the owner, has some attraction in terms of, of tax implications as far as the county is concerned. But I think that an alternative case can be made that an effective tourist strategy, which also represents an important revenue stream, has to be long range, broad based, and balanced. Visitors come to this area for all sorts of reasons. They come to enjoy our beaches. They come to visit our wineries. They come to go to live theater. And they also come to explore the history and to enjoy the natural beauty of Norfolk County. The constant stream of visitors that we see coming to paint or photograph or observe the beauty of the Ivy Waterfall tells you that there is a draw associated with peace and quiet associated with the outdoors and what one might argue to be a preserved natural landscape. So I, I thank you for your consideration of this input and you know, for your, your um, reading of my emails, which I sent. Um, and we do um, strongly recommend from our perspective that this application either be denied or deferred until there are adequate assurances firmly in place that issues such as are being raised by the neighbors have been addressed. Thank, thank you. you. Any questions from the councillors? Uh, just one quick one from me. So you're saying that if there was further clarification to the scope of the outdoor events, that you would be in support of the application? I'm saying if there was enough teeth to actually monitor it. You know, I, I think that we've had a pattern over a period of time where representations by neighbors have not affected any change in behavior. And from my observation, um, with the best intentions, I think the bylaw enforcement process is basically toothless in this case. I might tend to agree with you that we need to make some changes so, where bylaw is concerned. Yeah, and, and you know, that's fine. They may be coming, but they're not there today. And we're living there today. So, you know, my, my sense is until those issues have been resolved, this um, it, it is a very problematic situation to people living around. And I hear that noise in our house on the far side with the windows closed. So, you know, just as somebody said earlier, n noise drifts upstairs, up, uphill. I can tell you it certainly drifts downhill as well. Well, I certainly hope the more stories we hear in terms of particularly issues with bylaw enforcement, that will be a motivating force for our counselors moving forward to affect some change in that area. So I God appreciate speed. that. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you. My name is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Keith Milner, and I live at 91A Prospect Street in Port Dover. Um, I was a member of the RCMP for 40 years. I retired as a staff sergeant. I moved back to Port Dover approximately three years ago, as it is my hometown. I left when I was 19. Um, a lot of people know me for what I did. Um, I've been contacted numerous occasions 
by residents who live close to Clonmel who have asked me, what can we do? I have contacted a friend of mine, a relative actually, who's with bylaw enforcement, and his response is, as you know, uh, after the Labor Day weekend, they're not working evenings anymore because usually Port Dover relaxes and we don't have to put up with the, you know, the, the constant noise that is summer in Port Dover. However, numerous people have contacted me, two ladies in particular, they were in tears on the phone. And I told them, call the OPP if you can't get by law enforcement. They understood and they did that. Another person contacted me on Facebook and asked if there was something that could be done. Where is bylaw? I can't get in touch with bylaw. I advised them to get in touch with the OPP. I got in my truck on all three occasions and I drove down to Clonmel. I can't call it the kind of behavior that would be um, considered a hotel or a special function. It was a frat house. There were people dancing on the carport roof with cocktails in their hands. There was amplified music. And I saw people standing in the street completely disheartened that they were having to put up with this kind of behavior. It really was, it, it brought a tear to your eye, the kind of behavior that was being exhibited. I'm saying if you want to continue using the property as it is, then go ahead. I think that if you're going to turn this into a hotel, you're essentially giving carte blanche to, for this kind of behavior to continue. A noise wall will do nothing to stop the view of somebody in a flapper dress standing up on the top of the carport drinking a cocktail while there's amplified music being played and people are dancing. This is a frat house party. It's not a, you, you can get on Facebook all you want and you can say that we're having a dignified this, we're having a fundraiser that. These are frat house parties. And to continue, I've got the floor, not you. And the OPP have done that, ma'am. All I'm saying is, is that I don't believe that we have at this time the kind of enforcement or oversight that will afford the community a peaceful existence. These people here have the right to enjoy their property because of one person who wants to maintain a house, which is considered historic, and yet my mother was older than that house, all right? I don't think that one trumps the other. I think that these people, when you've got 28 residents living on that street, and you've got other people in close proximity, as, my, as the previous speaker mentioned, I think they have to be looked at, and they have to be listened to, and it has to be understood that they have the right to enjoy their property. And one person's efforts to make a living from what was a, a, a residential home does not trump that need for those other 28 people to enjoy their property. I grew up in Port Dover. I was a guest of Granny Barrett when it was the Barrett home. All right, it was a very elegant home housed with very elegant people. It was never a problem. The area that this is in is the old Dover itself, people. All right, it's where the Americans came and burned us down. And the British turned around and many of those were Canadians. They would become Canadians. They went to Washington and burned down the White House. That's why it's the White House, because they had to whitewash it because of the embarrassment. It's a historically significant piece of property. And it doesn't deserve to be housed with a frat party going on. All right? I think that if this property was in the United States, it would be hollowed ground, not, subject, not subjected to this kind of behavior. Thank you very much. Those are my submissions.
Hi, um, my name is Erica Boone, and with my aunt Beatrice uh, Hamilton, I own 156 uh, Prospect Street. It's, if you've been to Port Dover, there's the waterfall, and adjacent to it is a large white house with a wraparound porch. It's been in my family for 100 years, so we are also owners of a heritage home. Um, I would like to sp uh, speak about my... Um, unhappiness with what's going on on two points and um, one is about fairness. Ms. Steffler has been running what is essentially a hotel already and now as councilmen or councilwomen you're being asked to rubber stamp it and we uh, I think this is an unfair situation. Um, what would stop anyone else in Norfolk County to starting a business and then coming to you guys later and saying hey do you mind if we run this grow up or do you mind if we run you know uh, daycare or whatever so I find it um, I find it uh, I think it's a, a feeling of unfairness on behalf of all of us that you're allowing Ms. Steffler to to move on beyond what she's already done and it, and that, anyway that's number one point point. and number two point is um, about the quality of life this is a heritage area and um, there are many heritage homes with large properties and we all enjoy as, uh, as um, Sheila was saying the peace and quiet of the area and um, we want to encourage development in Port Dover but part of Port Dover's development or um, money stream would be tourism and so it would be we want to um, keep a heritage feeling to the area so and ultimately Ms. Steffler wants to build giant townhomes which are completely out of um, whack with what the heritage district would be like that so allowing her to have the hotel to get the money stream so she can then build the townhomes is very frustrating to watch happen. We own a heritage home. It is expensive, I understand, but I'm not asking you guys to help me finance the repairs on it. And so that's the reason I'm in opposition to this. Any questions? Oh, okay. Good evening, Mayor and uh, Councillors, <coughs> ladies. Um, my name's John Van Zahn. I live at 57 Tisdale Road. <coughs> now, by <coughs> a neighbor uh, perspective, uh, I'm 3,000 feet away. Uh, I live on the farm, <coughs> and the noise is a major <coughs> issue. Um, it goes on <clears throat> late into the evening. We're talking nighttime. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of the people on Clonmel um, may be uh, older than me, retired, some are working. Uh, but those of us who work hard all day, um, <clears throat> put in long hours, uh, <clears throat> we would like our rest at nighttime. We don't need to have um, music that filters its way 3,000 feet that doesn't make any sense. So my number one issue is the noise. Uh, second, the parking is an issue. Um, <clears throat> it's an issue now, presently. That's not with what's being proposed. So combine that with uh, an inadequate design on Clonmel Lane, and you've got an issue happening. You've got Clawmill Lane that comes right out to Tisdale at the top of a hill on a bent. You don't have the proper sight lines at all. The gentleman was referring to fire trucks. Well, I can tell you when I take my machinery, I cannot go through Clawmill Lane. And my tractor is not bigger than a fire truck.
So this facility, if you want to call it that, uh, is a heritage building. The wall is heritage. I'm thinking that the site is heritage. So you change one thing, you're changing everything. The whole site, as the previous lady said, is heritage. We all work hard to protect our properties within the community. As the lady said, um, Miss Lagoon, um, she takes care of her property. I know the people that lived in Parkinson's house, they take care of their property and its surrounding area. I take care of mine, which is 30 acres down that I protect. And I'm not about to go and change it. It's not heritage. But obviously, Long Point Region Conservation Authority thinks that it has some merit. So why are we proposing to change all this? Um, it's unique. It's unique now. Doesn't mean it's going to be unique when you pass this. Part of the lure to Port Dover is the view, the historic site. That's what we want to preserve. We don't want our neighbors to be in tears and not enjoy their evenings or their afternoons when they have guests over and they can't even talk to each other because music's so loud. Um, I had a couple of questions and I'm, I'll just list them off right now. Um, so that's all my main points. Um, so I mentioned, obviously, I believe it's a heritage site, not just a building and not just a wall. It's a, all parcel. Um, the hotel designation, I think I need more clarification with what a hotel designation offers. There should be a list that dictates what a hotel designation can do. It's, it's a pretty broad blanket. I'm not in favor of it, but I think there are some people here that should know the implications of calling it a hotel. <clears throat> And that's, that's everything. Thank you. Any questions from the councillors? Is there anyone else left to speak? Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Betty Gruba. And I live at 20 Clonmel Lane as of November 1st this year. So I feel a little bit that I may not be as up to speed as each of you. And um, I'm beginning to have concerns for the first time about this noise factor because obviously I have not been there um, through a spring or summer. So um, I truly have not experienced the concerns about noise. However, um, I do have some concerns about um, the potential traffic problems that may be created with um, additional parking spaces of 41 that they have referred to. I'd also like clarification on one point um, with there being a restaurant um, being opened in the hotel. I would like to know whether that will be open to the public. Pardon me? Okay, 
So that that's a, just a, a question that I'm going to leave on the table because I do believe that a restaurant open to the public um, may also bring additional traffic into the area that even though they may not be staying in the hotel, there will still be um, traffic that's going to be brought into the area. Um, I am in favor of economic development. I do realize that it is a necessary part of growing a vibrant community. Um, I just think that the sites for economic development have to be looked at very carefully. And perhaps you cannot go backwards once you have made a decision um, to move forward with a, a zoning change. The grandfather provision that has been talked about um, this evening, um, I don't think should be smoothed over. I think it is something that may need to be um, put on the table with numbers counted. The gentleman from the department um, indicated he um, did not know exact numbers. However, um, special event permits are required. So I think there is a way of generalize, uh, being more specific with the number of um, special permits that have been um, approved for Clonmel Castle now. Um, that you would have an idea as to whether the grandfathered provision can or should be assessed. Um, <clears throat> I think my biggest concern being a new resident is the beauty of the area it has already been mentioned that it is a historic area of Dover. When people ask me where I've moved, I don't say Port Dover, I say Dover. Um, recognizing that the historic area is special. I also believe that the property of Clonmel Castle is not just the, the fence and the castle itself, but it is the site and the beauty. And um, this councillor had mentioned that she had done a tour of the barn application. Um, and I would almost invite the councillors to take time to, if they have not toured the area, to do a walking tour of the area and to look at the beauty. I walk out of my front door and I have the Lynn Valley directly ahead of me within a half a block and I have the Lynn River and a waterfall to the right of me a half a block. I take my little dog down Tisdale and um, my concerns would be with additional traffic on Tisdale is it barely has enough room for two cars to come in opposing directions. Um, the uh, Mr. Van Zone talked about it being at the top of the curve. That is a very real um, issue. When I turn into Clonmel Lane off Tisdale, I feel the need to come to a full stop um, just so I can see around the turn. So additional traffic to the area um, certainly would be of great concern. And lastly, the environment, environmental impact to the whole area um, is something that whether we're talking about the townhouse development or um, having the castle turned into a hotel, septic system versus um, being attached to the sewer system, what grading is required to build a parking lot, um, Clonmel property is a very hilly property. At Clonmel Lane, it's very even. And then to head down towards uh, Prospect Street, it's very hilly. And I know all of the permits will come in time. Um, and I just hope that there is not an impact on the um, environment. That's it for me. Thank you, Mayor Chop. Actually, through the mayor to, to staff, would the um, kitchen be open to the public? Sorry, the restaurant. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, thank you for the question. Um, in terms of the definition of a restaurant, uh, it would be uh, open uh, to the public. And in terms of the capacities, uh, that would be dictated through uh, spacing and uh, building code requirements for seatings. Is it possible then that uh, Ms. Steffler would be able to have 
over her 50 or whatever the, the si I can't recall specifically the size for her special events, but um, a larger volume of people in the building for a restaurant event. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, in, in terms of the special events uh, component uh, with respect to the hotel, um, there is the provision uh, for limitation at 170 square meters. Uh, so there is the potential that that could be captured through those provisions if, uh, if council so desired. Sorry, I don't think I understood that. So my, I, my apologies. If Ms. Steffler has the restaurant open to the public, can she exceed the 170 meters and include ad additional guests outside of what would be per per permitted for her special events inside the restaurant? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, I would say yes, um, but that is something if the size limitation uh, one was to be capped um, through a recommendation, that is something that could be addressed. Thank you, that's all. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to take this one little step further. Remember what we're looking at is changing the zoning on a property. The individual that owns it currently is not possibly might not own it in the future, we're changing the zoning on the property. And if we change the zoning to allow a restaurant, that's what it means. Yeah, the temporary provision. Sorry. Thank you. Can I add one point and then I'll just sit down? My concern was not just about the number of people in the hotel, but it's for the car traffic that will be revolving around. You really, under, you really need to walk down to Steel Road to understand how tight it is. And to have an additional volume of traffic that's going in there, in and out, in and out, in and out, is of very much of concern. Madam Mayor, Councillors, my name is Peggy Scott. I'm here representing myself and my husband. We live at 3 Clonmel Lane in Port Dover, which abuts the property, um, Clonmel. <clears throat> I'm fortunate to have the 100-day cough here, so I'm hoping that I can get through this without a lot of effort here. <clears throat> but anyways, it's already been established here that the events happening on this property are in contravention of the zoning bylaw. We, that's been established. The letters, emails, and deputations tonight have established the negative effect these events have had on the neighbors. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the three different notices that we've received <clears throat> from the planning department for this one zoning amendment. The first one, dated September the 14th, included the 36 stacked townhomes and additional residential opportunities for up to 30 guest bed and breakfast and permission for special events for up to 50 people. Now that didn't work because of the Ontario Building Code. Um, once you get past three rooms, you're looking at a hotel. So the next, second notice we received was just prior to the September the 25th um, meeting and it was to permit a hotel and event space up to 50 people. Of course, the hotel status brings with it a whole new set of issues, which the definition accessory uses, restaurant, bar, and nightclubs. Um, as you're aware, that report was deferred. Now we have our third notice, which brings us here tonight. This amendment is now for a site-specific nine-room hotel and event space. Um, the, the, the bylaw even has a provision in there for a new or different definition of hotel. There just seems to be a desperate attempt here to accommodate one property owner with little consideration for the 44 others who will be adversely affected by allowing this amendment. Let's not lose focus here. This is zoned as a single family dwelling and it's in a quiet residential neighborhood. Please do not support this recommendation. Thank you.
through you, Madam Mayor. It's always been the process that the applicant uh, or their um, uh, agent can come forward and address some of the issues raised. It's not, not on normal, but we don't open the floor to everybody else. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for the opportunity to respond. Let, let me first of all indicate that I'm impressed by your, your questions of the first speaker from Starfish Construction because while the gentleman says he has 30 years of planning or development experience to suggest that we get building code, fire code, plumbing code, electrical code compliance before we get zoning permission, quite frankly, is unheard of. You're absolutely correct. Those permissions come after the fact. Zoning establishes the land use permission then you go and get your other permits and your other approvals. Um, I can also assume that the gentleman has never been in the house, yet he's made a statement that it doesn't comply to existing codes. Well, I don't know how you can say that if you've never been inside the dwelling. Regardless, you can be rest assured that should you grant this zoning, compliance with fire code, plumbing code, electrical code is required. Otherwise, the hotel use will not be established. Full stop. With respect to some of the other concerns, um, suggestions that it's being advertised as a hotel today, it's being advertised as a B&B &B and a lodging house. Those are the permissions that are available. And as I indicated in my earlier presentation, that's been the cause of the confusion. A B&B &B with so many suites, yet there are additional suites within this building that technically cannot be rented out. And that's what we're simply trying to clarify through this application. There's concerns raised about the lack of surety, the lack of enforcement. We welcome surety. We're willing to put as many handcuffs on this site as you want to place on it. The 50 persons, the timing for, uh, for amplified music, whatever restrictions this council wishes to apply, Ms. Steffler is willing to accept. And then it comes down to a matter of enforcement, and I'll leave that in your good hands to, to, uh, to deal with. We talked about no one being able to trump another one, and, and you'll recall in my presentation what I wanted to, uh, to achieve is striking a balance, a balance between the residents' rights and enjoyment and the use of their property and Ms. Steffler's rights to, to use a heritage resource in, in a, a functional and efficient manner. It's that balance that we're trying to achieve. Um, there was a, a question about the, the, the restaurant use and how the restaurant will be accommodated. And, and you know, we, we, can, we, we go to these public meetings to listen and, and to um, amend the application as possible. And while that presentation was going on, I asked Ms. Steffler if she would be willing to accept further handcuffs or further restrictions that limit the restaurant to being accessory to the hotel and special events. In other words, my wife and I, cannot go there and say, Linny, can you book us a table? I'm not a guest of the hotel. I'm not there for a special event. That, that I can do at Langdon Hall. But she's willing to accept that if the restaurant is simply there, accessory to the hotel, it still will cater to the high teas. It will still cater to any special events. But you and I will not be able to go there and book a table. The residents don't want that type of restaurant. Ms. Steffler is willing to accept that. Again. A reasonable compromise. We're trying to strike that balance. Those are my submissions. Thank you. Apologize. I did have a question for uh, Mr. Aarons and the applicant. Uh, I want to know that if we were to pass. Uh, what's before us, how many uh, individuals would be employed by um, the hotel? Thank you, that was all.
Um, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, in terms of uh, the um, history for the uh, dwellings on Clon Mill, um, that was dealt with through the former city of Nanticoke, and uh, it did go to the Ontario Municipal Board. Um, there, the original proposal, I believe, was for 29 uh, single detail, or excuse me, 29 uh, residential units, so 29 townhouses, um, and that got uh, reduced uh, through some negotiation and a couple of meetings to the uh, to what you see today for the 22 townhomes and then the two single detached dwellings, uh, which were intended to provide the buffer along Prospect Street. Um, in terms of the feedback that we get on applications, um, it, it all is dependent upon the type of application, the, neighbor, the nature of the application, and uh, the, the neighborhood that it, it's happening in. Um, I've had, uh, pre in my planning career, I have had similar type applications, um, but uh, it, it's all in terms of the, the site specifics on it. So just so I understand correctly, it was previously these additional townhomes were denied by council and it went to the OMB, 29 of them and 22 were approved at the OMB. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, no, uh, the uh, former city of Nanticoke did approve uh, the uh, amendments. Um, it was appealed by a neighbor and then uh, brought forward to the Ontario Municipal Board. Okay. Councillor Van Passen, you had a question. Uh, no, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I have a bit of a comment. I was there uh, back in 95 at the City of Nanticoke Planning Committee and we had to actually change the venue of the meeting for the overflows of the crowds. Um, there was a lot of interest in the rezoning back then and uh, the owner at the time actually went to the, the extent of applying for a demolition permit for Clonmel itself because if he eliminated the original house then he was free to develop the entire area all at once. and. Uh, yeah, it was approved, went to municipal board, was uh, yeah, turned down, but then adjusted through some mediation, and finally the municipal board did approve what is existing now. And uh, you know, I almost find it like, what do they say, deja vu all over again, because before it was the neighbors farther up prospect that are opposed to it, and now it's all the ones that live in the area that was cut off of Clonmel that are opposed to it. and. Uh, it's made for some interesting uh, memories and some interesting reading lately, so. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, and just one further question for you, Ms. Van Dalen. What would the process look like if, if further restrictions, if Ms. Steffler was amenable to including some additional restrictions uh, on the operation? Um, uh, through you, Madam Chair, in terms of further restrictions, um, I, I think it's probably best and I uh, may rely on Ms. Doosling just to, to add any supplementary here, um, that we bring back uh, the proposals in terms of uh, the requests, whether um, we would need some direction from Council in terms of what restrictions or what additional provisions would be included, and then we could bring that back um, at a subsequent meeting in terms of uh, potential adoption of the, the bylaw at that time. I would um, add to Shannon's comments that if it's council's desire only to change um, the restaurant, that that's probably uh, doable this evening. It doesn't change um, the intent of the application and the public notice that was given. So planning staff would, would uh, appreciate and go forward with that. And there is some wording uh, that Mr. Arians has provided in that regard. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Pam, one, one more thing. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is, has ever happened before, but I was, um, I was at a, a hearing actually once in Baltimore at a liquor board hearing, and what they had a process there that if you had a new applicant applying for a liquor license, uh, there was an opportunity for the public to come in and speak as to whether or not they supported that application. And if there was a significant number of residents that were opposed to it, what happened was they actually requested um, input from those members to develop some sort of uh, happy medium, shall we say, um, that 
both supported, you know, the advancement of the liquor license and how went so far as to address some of the concerns. I'm just wondering if you might, I know maybe we haven't done that in the past or if that might be something we might maybe be able to consider as a, as a group to be able to come to a resolution for some of these issues. Um, thank you. Um, great suggestion, Mayor Chop. Um, some municipalities have been known to do what are called ward meetings or community meetings, uh, where a lot of those um, public comments are heard before it gets to the actual public meeting of council, um, and there is an opportunity to work through. Uh, we have historically not done that in Norfolk County. It doesn't mean that's not an option for Norfolk County. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's nothing further, I believe uh, next step here is if somebody would like to make a... Councilor Shelley. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I just have a, <clears throat> uh, just a general comment uh, about this. Um, I think a lot of this, sort of the very root of this is that we have already addressed earlier, I believe it was the second speaker in opposition, uh, was referring to the weakness or the uh, ineffectiveness of our current bylaws. And um, you know, we kind of seem to have forgotten that. If we have appropriate bylaw enforcement, I think a lot of these other issues would get taken care of. So I kind of think in some ways we're kind of putting the cart you know, before the horse. So maybe we need to look at that before we deal with this. Okay, thank you. Councilor Martin. I would Thank you. I would echo Councillor Michelli's comments that at this point in time, it is my it's my feeling that um, we aren't protecting the residents who are opposed to this issue. Um, I would hate to ask for a deferral after spending this much time um, on this issue. However, we are, there's no way that we can ensure that we can uh, make both parties happy uh, by moving forward with this with this motion. So I would. Um, okay. Well, I will like we'll to come back first. We'll have to close the public meeting, and then uh, then we'll move to Thank the you. staff recommendation and or deferral at that point. Councillor Van Passen, did I see a hand? Hey, Madam Mayor, I was going to suggest that we close the public meeting, and I could sure use a five minute stretch and maybe sort a few things out of my head and then come back and discuss what we do with it. Is that possible or? To the clerk, is that fair to do? Okay. Um, okay, so. A motion to close the public meeting. Is that a motion then to close yes. the meeting, <laughs> the public meeting? Okay, Councillor Van Passen, seconded by Councillor Taylor. Great, and I guess we'll uh, take, how long do we need, 15 minutes? minute break 10 minutes longer five minutes five minutes okay
Okay, now that we're back in session, um, would somebody like to move the staff recommendation in the report or propose an alternative? Councillor Columbus? Madam Mayor, I would like to move the following motion, that the application by Lynn, Lenny Steffler, 150 Prospect Street, Port Dover, Ontario, NOA 1N1, affecting lands described as part lot A, plan 186, block 5, plan 1223, urban Urban area of Port Dover to amend the Norfolk County Zoning Bylaw 1Z 2014 file number ZNPL 2018-191 be denied. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Martin. Please forgive me. I don't know uh, specific protocol here, but I would like to put forth an amended motion as well. Uh, and a seconder for Councillor Columbus's motion. Councillor Michelli. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Oh, some discussion on the motion. My, sorry, <laughs> throwing me off here. Any discussion on the? Motion?